Virginia's own Wes Isley beat the competition on Penn and Teller's magic-based show, Fool Us, this week. It's going to re-air this Sunday at 9 on The CW, if you missed it. I caught up with him tonight, and he even did a trick for me via Skype. He's really a good entertainer. Isley says his big win has his phone just ringing hot. It could open a lot of doors for his career, and he's just over the moon about it. Well, I have um, my baby with me. I brought it all the way down the road to show it off for you, just to let you see it. I had to pack it with towels, put it in a suitcase, pack extra towels. This is my baby. You can see the excitement there. You may recall seeing Isley on our air. He routinely goes to Carilion Children's Hospital to perform for the children there. We've covered him doing that. You know, he told me no matter what happens with his career, he is always going to continue Aww. doing that, which I think is just wonderful. Yeah. The kids love it, too. They're, they just light up. But those are the types of people who you want to succeed. Absolutely. Those who are giving back to the community already and they're going to continue. Oh, I hope you make it fun. Yeah, and again, it, it re-airs on Sunday night. It was a pretty fun show to see it. I mean, I wasn't even aware of the show until this this week i had seen like one episode maybe before you, okay i heard it because i <laughs> yeah. asked you because you were watching okay yeah. we're on the same page now. Now <laughs> yeah. people always ask how i balance my family life with 400 shows a year i'm just doing what i love with the people i love it's my magic life All right, well, this week has been a whirlwind, to say the least. Uh -huh. uh, since being on Penn and Teller's Fool Us and winning the award, my phone has been blowing up. Emails, phone messages, social media stuff, text messages, phone calls. It was. I had to force him to put his phone down. Like, he wouldn't just take a break from his phone for, like, 48 hours. I was like, Wes, at some point, you got to be human and put your phone down. <laughs> But I have people commenting and, and saying, hey, good job. And a lot of them are people I don't hear from that often. I was like, oh, my friend, I want to answer him. I want to talk to him. Phone calls. But I also had weird phone calls, like uh, my phone number's on my website. So you had people calling from, like, uh, I don't know, Indiana, probably on the 800 number. I, can I just take a guess on how you did your trick? I'd like to talk to you about your magic. It was a very brilliant idea. But I think I know how it's done. Can I just take a guess? No. No, I, I don't have time. No, but I'm, I'm being nice. Yeah. You're a magician. You do magic. That's great. Yeah, but and no, I, I can't play games. Yeah. I don't know. It's just weird. I don't know you. And you sell the trick. So it wouldn't be, you can't confirm or deny whether or not they got it right because that's not fair to the people that paid money. And even when they guess a part of it, they're not getting the whole thing. So buy the trick. You'll get the whole package. Yeah. It's like trying to, it's like, um... Avatar. Describe the movie Avatar to someone and then have that person watch the movie. They'll get nuances, they'll get some <laughs> effects of it, but they won't be able to put it all together in their right. head. And yeah. You kind of got to get the DVD and buy it and, yeah. and you'll learn different. everything. You'll, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I have people saying, why are you selling that trick? It's so, it fooled Penn and Teller, why are you selling the trick? That's what magicians do. We, we sh if you sell the trick so that you don't have 13 year old kids on YouTube trying to expose the trick, because if you don't tell magicians how it's done, they're going to make up a version that's worse and say this is how it's done, and then they'll sell it. So yeah, that's true. if you don't put your version out, they'll never know. And my version is the best version of this ever created, <laughs> if I do say so myself. And so does big name magicians like Penn and Teller and some big headliners in Vegas. We've sold this magic trick now to magicians all over the world. We have a secret Facebook group where they can talk and share stuff. It's, it's pretty awesome. Now, I've had it as my baby since 2013. Been doing it in almost every show since 2013. And now... It's starting to be recognized as saying, hey, this dude's got something. Check this out. You need to buy this trick. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, crazy. So, phone blown up, phone on fire, magic orders coming in. Phone on fire? It actually got hot. My phone was actually hot. Because you want to put it down. <laughs> <laughs> I like your DVD when you put in the TV to it. Yeah. It gets hot. Yep, there you go.
So my publicist said that we had some people that were interested in interviewing me after my win. And we had some local news wanting us and can you email us? Can you give us some times that you're available? Well, it's quarantine. We're available. Mm -hmm. And all right, well, we'll have them call you in the morning. They never called. But people from down in Roanoke, which is two and a half hours south of us, we do their news outlets all the time because we're doing the charity stuff down there. So they all know us. They all like us. And we did the uh, daytime Blue Ridge down in Roanoke. We filmed that outside. We brought Willow along with us and we filmed it outside. Quarantine friendly. Yes. Social distancing. Yes. Cameraman kind of had a mask on at certain points. We were there for like an hour. He had it on for like three minutes. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> he was the furthest one away from us. Yeah. So. Really. And uh, it was a great interview. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. We have arrived to do the news interview in Roanoke. I'm videoing this segment. Wes is here waiting for his turn. Getting it all ready. He's got his trophy out, fixing up his magic trick. This thing goes with me everywhere now. It does not, don't lie. Dying over here. 
why, what kind of thrill do you get? What's, why are you passionate about this? That smile on your face says it all. It's entertaining the audiences. And putting a smile on people's face. Uh, for Corona, we've been sitting at home for three months. I haven't been able to do this. So it gives me a thrill. I, I love it. All right, take it from the top. I have no idea. Just look at it. Just look at it. Yeah. Is that what I said the first time? Yeah, yep. Okay. Start with the smile. Like, you know, so yeah. why are you passionate about it? What, what's the thrill? You said there's nothing like live shows, too, just let Thank you know. You. Thank you. That's you're welcome. <laughs> so whenever you're ready. That smile on your face says it all. That's why I do it, to entertain people, to put smiles on people's faces. I don't know what people are going through, but this brightens up people's day. And live shows, there's nothing like it. We've been sitting at home for three months. So being able to perform for you and having that smile and interaction is priceless. Okay, that was great. And um, brought my trophy down with me and had that. And the oh, lady. you should have seen him bring his trophy. He wanted to bring his trophy so he could be seen on the interviews, but he was nervous, acting in towels, and should have put it in bubble wrap. I wouldn't be surprised if we had had somebody put that around there, put it in this hard suitcase, put it by itself in its own little slot in the back of the car. I worked hard for that trophy. Don't touch that suitcase. He could have. You know what I mean? Because he didn't. No. Well, your cousin Willow is very clumsy. She can't She's walk accident. downstairs without falling down. She's she broke our swing set this week. I don't want the kid touching my trophy or the case. I can't blame the, the swing set incident on her. It's an old swing. <laughs> it's an old swing that just happened to get broke while she was on it. Anyway. Now it's like, get down, get down. All right. Anyway, anyway. So um, while we're out there, they were making fun of me because while the other interview was going on, I had my little table set up with my deck of cards and my trophy on it. And, and the wind blew. He didn't care about the cards flying. He just had to hold on to his trophy, which is heavy enough. It was a slight breeze. Let's put it that way. It blew cards in the card <laughs> box. I know. But I grabbed my trophy and I started looking around and they all started laughing. I'm like, it's not funny. The trophy is heavy enough to not move during that it's light plexiglass. breeze. I'm not risking it. <laughs> no. You're adorable, baby. Hey. I love you. Dang on. I love you so much. It's it's cute how protective he is of his trophy. And he can't get another one, so really you can't blame him too much because if it breaks, it's that done. That was a slight breeze. Yes. It's, it's a little bit of overreaction, but you know what? It's okay. He's like it's, this. It's adorable. It's very cute. Anyway. <laughs> He's like this. Yes. <laughs> so while we were down there, um, the other news station called and said, hey, they got word from my publicist that I was in the area. Would I be able to do a Skype interview? Because they didn't have anybody coming in studio for interviews at that point. I'm like, yeah. So um, we did that in, at her parents' house. Mm -hmm. And that dude, that dude was awesome. That, yeah. he was, it was like I've been talking to an old friend. He's never interviewed me in person. It's always been over Skype. Yeah, because the last time our schedules just didn't mesh to be able to get down there, so they decided to do it over Skype that time as well. And then this time, they are not allowed to have anybody in studio, and they weren't doing it outdoors like the other one was. They just, everything over Skype if they were interviewing anybody, so. Which but it was wasn't fine. forced. It wasn't a forced interview at no. all. It wasn't, man, I was like talking to an old friend. I'm like, wow, I don't even think I've ever worked for this guy before or been interviewed by this guy. And then the next day on my social media, like Facebook memories came up and I had the guy's name that he interviewed me over Skype the year before the following day. So if it was July, yeah. whatever, it was the, yeah. Yeah. So it was, so he had interviewed me before and he was, he was awesome, really good. Yes. I'm doing fantastic. Do you want me to show you a trick as well or am I just talking about the, the wind? I think that would be a lot of fun. To show you a trick as well? To show you a trick as well? Yeah, that'd be great. Let me get a deck of cards. Okay, wonderful. Do you want this sideways or do you want it up and down? Uh, it's been right now, right? It's sideways right now. It, it looks great right like that. Okay. My perfect. wife is videotaping. I'll try to keep this real quick so your arms don't get tired. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> hey, thank you for doing this. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you for all you do. I know we covered you back in December when you made a trip over to the hospital, the Children's Hospital, and I think that's just wonderful. I absolutely love when people take their talents, and especially with the kids. If you could bring a little joy to them, I, I would imagine that that's something that you really enjoy doing and get a lot out of. 
Yeah, I really do. I, I really do. I told my wife if I hit the lottery, I'd still be doing magic and still do the charity stuff because it, it's just nothing like it. I imagine it feels a bit like you do hit the lottery sometimes when you see those reactions. Oh, and, and so I, I, could, I could go on and on, Lynn, seriously, about the stories of kids with scars and, and new staples in their face and you're, they want to smile and you're like, I don't know if you should be smiling or, or you know, the, the, the dad, uh, there's a story that I always tell about a little boy and his eyes are rolling back in his head and the nurse just says, go ahead, that's Tommy, he's 14. But I couldn't see Tommy because Tommy was on heavy medication with a trach tube in. So I immediately went to the foot of his bed and I started performing for the mom and the dad and the daughter. And it felt like the temperature in the room changed. Uh, everybody started laughing. Everybody was having a good time. And I was in there about 10 minutes. And as I left, the dad told me that he just found out that his son was going to be paralyzed. And it was at Christmas time, man. And just to be able to take people out of that, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. You have an amazing talent. And it was on display on the show. Congratulations to you. You came out on top. I saw it when it aired. And it was fantastic, and I know you got an awful lot of praise. The audience participation thing you did, I know that was a big hit there, and um, you really impressed them. Yeah, I'm, I'm growing up loving Penn and Teller. I mean, I've been watching them my whole life. I, I don't remember never not watching Penn and Teller and being fans. And during the interview montage with uh, Allison, I told her most kids my age had pictures of Cindy Crawford on their walls growing up. I had pictures of Penn and Teller on my walls. So that's why when they were praising me, I was looking at her like, oh, this is great. Look, my idols are praising me. And then it just got better and better and snowballed from there. And now, since being on the show, uh, I've become pen pals with Penn. Uh, we get to go back to Vegas and do our show at the Rio, and I get to hang out with Penn and tell her. It's just, I haven't woke up from this dream yet. It's just, it's amazing. Well, I just got introduced to the show recently. I've only seen one episode prior to this. I didn't know it was out there, but I imagine it's a huge vehicle that can be used to take a magician and up his or her status quite a bit. Yes, and since winning, uh, my phone is lit physically hot from all the voicemails, text messages, phone calls, magic orders. I sell that trick to magicians all over the world. So it's just bringing off the hook. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, so people from all over the world have congratulated me since my appearance. It's been amazing. So, so let me ask you, I mean, is this, this is probably going to be more than just congratulations. I mean, is this the start of something really big for you now where you're, I mean, not that you haven't been successful to this point, but does this mean that you might get a residency in Vegas or who knows where this could go? Who knows where it can go? I'm not going to say Vegas residency, but uh, bigger contracts and Taken, taken more seriously, you know, when somebody sees me, um, I was actually downstairs before you go up talking to one of the other acts, and um, we bonded over the fact that no matter how big you're getting magic, yeah, I was doing a show for the British Embassy, and one of the people at the British Embassy was like, uh, oh, this is great, uh, I wish my kid was here to see it. You're having fun, why, does, why do you have to take it down to a kid level? It's family entertainment, it's not just for kids, so hopefully I've maybe gotten out of the kids market now so nothing against kids shows nothing I, not that i'll stop doing carillion but uh taken more seriously maybe that's that's all i can ask for well congratulations again i mean I, I, i'm fascinated by it i love card tricks i want my daughter when she uh turned nine i believe i got her a little magic kit and i i just got it for her to see if she might have gotten the bug and maybe wanted to do it it, it didn't happen you know um, <laughs> I, I think when i was a kid i had a little bit of uh, an interest in it but it's it's a lot of hard work i know it's what you're doing is trying to fool the mind and use your your uh not only your wits but your you have to be really deft you know, like with the cars and whatnot and it's a real challenge to try and make something just disappear in your hands and it takes an awful lot of focus and dedication and practice does it not yes sir and you have to be entertaining at the same time there is people out there magicians i look up to that are amazing performers but to watch their show, it's, it's a miracle that, you're, that what they're doing, but it can be kind of dry. So you have to have the entertainment aspect as well as the rehearsal, as well as the technical skills, and you have to put it all together to have a successful show. Well, it's really impressive. I don't know if you've seen that viral clip of the guy doing a car trip for a monkey at the zoo. Yes. And the huge reaction. Yeah, well, a lot of times I might as well be the monkey in the cage. Right? <laughs> Sunday, you said, correct? 
Sunday at 9 o'clock on the CW. Yes, sir. Check it out. Did you grow up in this area? Uh, near Charlottesville, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And now we live near Richmond, Virginia. We moved a couple years ago. Gotcha. Great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Virginia born and raised. And so, you know, just proud of you. And, Thank um, you, sir. So, uh, so if there's anything else you want to say about it, feel free. Well, I have um, my baby with me. I brought it all the way down to Roanoke to show it off for you, just to let you see it. <laughs> I had to pack it with towels, put it in a suitcase, pack extra towels. This is my baby. And um, you feel free to contact me. Say it again? Oh. <laughs> that's Penn and Teller. That's Penn and Teller. They don't like being fooled, and they want to let you know. That's their, that's their thing to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, off the air, you can uh, email me or message me after we get done with this, and um, I will send you links to other female magicians. Maybe that'll help inspire and get that bug for your daughter. Oh, that'd be great. That could be, that could be a good catalyst. She's not nine years old now. She's 17, and I don't think it's going to happen. But well, you know what? She may not know that there are performing women magicians out there. It's, um, there's more and more, but it still could happen. Yeah, here, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm going to go through and uh, just tell me when to stop. I don't know, just whenever. Okay. Right about now. That one. You want that card right there? Sure. Okay, I'm going to put it here. There's your card. Is it on the camera? Is that good? Yep. Yeah? So watch. I'll take your card, and I'll put it in the middle of the pack. Now, of course, I saw it. It's a seven of hearts. But if I do this, it jumps to the top. Yeah? If I take your card, if I take your card and put it um, way down here, it wouldn't be down here and here at the same. Oops, here at the same time, right? Right. But now it is. Yeah. I mean, that's your card. If you were here, I'd have you sign the card, right? So yeah. watch. Here's the card. One last thing. I'll do this as slow as possible. I'll do this. And I'll do this, i do this, and then Natalie, if you can bring your hand in and just push that in for him, push it in, perfect. I do this, and then we go through the pack one at a time, doesn't even matter. Your card has vanished. Seven of diamonds, seven of spades. There it is. Check it out. Sunday night on the CW, you'll see me full pen and teller and uh, change my life, man. Be a part of it. I, Check it out. I expect it will. I really do. Hey, thank you, Wes, for taking the time and thanks again for all you do for the kids. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for everything. You know it. Take care. All right. Bye bye. Really flowed. It was a really good interview. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, I want to watch it on TV. And I'm waiting, and waiting, and waiting. It's an hour-long news program, and I was the last thing that was on there, and it was only like 30 seconds, 40 seconds. But it was a good spot. It was good. It was yeah. a good spot. So Penn Gillette has his own podcast called Penn Sunday School that comes out every Sunday. And someone on my Instagram account said, man, I can't wait to hear what Penn has to say about your trick uh, this Sunday. And I was like, Ooh. What do you mean? I, I was thinking as I'm reading it, what, what? What? And as I was doing research, after every episode of Fool Us, he reviews it and goes over each person step by step how he felt about them five months later, because we filmed it in March. Five months later, how, what he thought of the act over, over time. Yeah. Well, I was nervous. I, I was more nervous for this interview, for this uh, podcast, than I was being on stage that night. I was... My, I don't know why, because he already heard him pen praise him. I was feeling my, my pulse was pounding. I was shaky. I was freaking out. And you were moved. Here's the thing, though. With magic tricks, you get really excited. You buy the magic trick. You might perform it. You might not. But over time, it's just another magic trick. It's like hearing a joke. It's the funniest joke you've ever heard in your life, but now tell it for the next five months, and it's just, 
That's a joke I heard a while. It's funny, but it's all right. Magic's the same way. It's, it's one of those things, it's hot right now, but it won't be hot later. Well, when Penn started talking about me, it was an hour-long podcast. And he talked about me for 15 minutes, 15 straight minutes, but off and on. Yeah. So like 13 minutes and then a couple other references to how great I was later. I was on cloud nine. It was, yeah. it was amazing. I had tears in my eyes. It was Couldn't ask amazing. for anything better. He was very, very kind. And he really, you could tell he really liked the trick and he really liked Wes and he really liked the performance and everything else. So it was very complimentary. He had, I no reason to be nervous i mean well i just figured over time he knows the trick now he's had time to play with it it's just another trick it's but no not to pen pen loves the idea of it pen loves everything the only thing he said he didn't like about west was that west came out up with the trick instead of pen coming up with the trick which i thought was pretty funny <laughs> so the only thing i don't like about west and the pause is like a microsecond but to me, it was eternity. I'm like, oh no, what was it? What was it? What was it? <laughs> it was, I was nervous. I was scared to death. But, oh my gosh, I can't wait to thank Penn again and tell him how much I appreciate everything. Uh, the guy who's up next is the guy who reads your mail. This may have been my favorite act the whole, the whole season. Yeah, he was one of me. He's like, I'm listening today, just so you know. And I was like, I don't think you need to worry uh, about anything we're going to say. <laughs> Even though it's kind of unfair, Wes Eisley, you can't message me before we talk about you. You've got to wait till after. I like Wes Eisley. I like everything about him. Yeah. Wes Eisley came all, out. Yeah. He has an act that he can play 5,000 people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're and I believe, I believe he needs to bring no props with him. Yes, that's correct. Not yeah. None. I mean, none. Uh, this is my dream act. The yeah. only thing I didn't like about him was that I didn't think of it. <laughs> uh, it is uh, intellectually stimulating. It has a great puzzle quality. It is light, easy, breezy. And he uses a half dollar, a piece of paper, and a pen. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I like him. I like him a lot. He sent me other stuff on his website and stuff. Although yeah. I'll tell you, nobody can remember the name Isley. Have you noticed that? Yeah. It's Isley. Is it like the Isley brothers? That's how I heard it. And I'll remember it forever. We'll find out in a minute. <laughs> but, uh, it's Isley. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's not. Uh, he, you, you, you flipped up a... As soon as he started, Teller turned to you and said, this is a you kind of trick. <laughs> as you over it. It, is, it is a, it is, it is probably, this includes, by the way, Penn and Teller bits. The most Penn bit of the whole <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the camera actually caught you, and this is very rare for fools, they subtitled you, telling to Teller mid, you know, mid-rounds, I could not love this trick more. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I, I I just loved it so so much. And what's fun, especially if Wes is on the chat, what's fun is that like you often get put positions to also lecture and do other things like that besides that and you often don't like to mix your art forms. If you're there to lecture, you lecture and you don't like to do magic tricks if you're asked just to talk. This is definitely one that you can definitely just whip out at a huge lecture if you're running like 10 minutes short or something like that. I, 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 and I, Wes has been very kind to me. Yeah. Of course, you know, we've learned that when you, uh, uh, I hope people have learned that uh, I will, if I do it, I will very likely say this is a Wes Eisley trick. Yeah. The only thing that stopped me from doing that is not remembering his name. <laughs> <laughs> but now that I can think of the Eisley brothers, uh, yeah. you know, uh, which is correct. Which is correct. They're so hard on mine, been broke a thousand <laughs> times, each time a different way. I'll just think that, you know. I'll just think of Wes flipping his coin while the Isley brothers sing that. <laughs> it's your thing. It's your thing. It's what you want to do. It, oh, oh, that's right. The Isley brothers, it's your thing, right? I don't buy right with it's all, this whole heart of mine, too? Yes. Okay, good. But it's your thing is better. It's your thing. It's your thing. Yeah. 
So it's it's a Wes Eisley's thing, is that coin flip thing. I just loved it. Uh, 400 shows a year is what we average, but I feel like I'm on the road by myself. I don't have a big magic community that I go to. All of the big uh, conventions are during the summer, during our busy season. I don't get to go to those. Um, I live out here in Virginia, and it's not a big group of professional magicians. There's a lot of hobbyists around, but professional magicians that I can pitch ideas off of and hang out with, there's just none around. Yeah. So having people from all over the world reach out and tell me how great it was, and people tagging me in Facebook posts from the Magic Castle in L.A. and New York. It's pretty awesome. So, um, I got a phone call last night. There's a magazine called Vanish Magazine. It's one of the most read magic magazines in the world. He's talking about putting my trick in it for um, maybe next month or the month after as a highlight magic trick that a magician sells to highlight it in the magazine. And also doing a, a story or maybe a cover story on me in future issues. It's just, it's amazing. So, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for being a part of this. We're still, uh, things are still rolling. This is pretty awesome. And I couldn't do it without my girls. No. Thank you, girls. Thank you, honey. Thank you for getting me off my phone and looking at your face. Because your face is beautiful. Oh, suck up. <laughs> Five. All right, ready? You want to say, uh, see you next week? Mm -hmm. One, two. See, see you next, next week! week.